the snow's coming down, and none of us are really in that great of a mood as we go on yet another trek to check the deadfalls. I've never had to experience hunger pains like this before. When the temperatures are like this, man, our bodies are burning energy like crazy. Nothing. Oh, strike three. Are we out? We're out. I'm cold and I'm hungry out here. I'm in hell. For thousands of years, man lived wild, and our triumph over Mother Nature defined who we were. We were rugged, we were strong, and as we evolved, our ingenuity led to towering achievements. We secured our place at the top of the food chain, and now we have the waistline to prove it. I'm Creek Stewart. I'm a survivalist, and this is your midlife wake-up call. So get off the couch and come out to the woods. If you can survive a week with me, you can take on anything. Survival is simple. Just don't die. We are in a really magical place this week. The terrain is dotted with primitive rock shelters and remnants of stone tools and artifacts from Native American Indians who used to settle in this area. And I'm waiting on three guys who are on their way to the edge of the wilderness. Why'd you come out here? Man, because I'm crazy. Rock is a 32-year-old factory worker, originally from Memphis, Tennessee. Rock's a smoker. But this week, he's going to go cold turkey and hopefully put that vice behind him. Have you ever uh, gone out in the woods camping before? A long time ago. Dan's 41 years old, and he's already accomplished a lot coming into this experience. I've been through a lot of stuff with injuries and health issues. Dan used to be in a wheelchair because he weighed almost 500 pounds. Now, 200 pounds lighter, Dan is pursuing his childhood dream of becoming a professional wrestler. And he came to the woods to keep pushing himself. When they dumped me out in the woods in the Marine Corps, they dumped me out in the woods with everything I needed. Jeff is a 39-year-old guy at a crossroads in his life. Over a decade ago, he moved from Maine to Nashville to hopefully make it in the music biz, but has been working a nine-to-five job ever since. Jeff just lost his job, and now he's got a big decision to make. Go back to work for the man to support his family or pursue his dream of music. Everybody's got an opinion on what Jeff should do, but this week, he's here to figure it out on his own. Hello. Hey, Creek. Good to meet you, Dan. Dan, pleasure. Jeff, nice, nice to meet, to meet you. you. Who we got here? Rob. Hey, Rob. Pleasure to meet you. Nice, nice to meet you, meet you, man. Welcome to the edge of the wilderness, fellas. <sighs> I feel like the edge. This week, we'll spend the first few days training together. And then you'll be spending one night solo where you'll have to survive on your own. Before we take off out of here, I have each of you a backpack. Inside, you have a funky-looking tool that looks like this. You're going to be drinking all of your water this week through this filter. Secondly, you'll be getting a survival knife. That's all you get, fellas. I, I noticed we're missing toilet paper. <laughs> <laughs> Remember the word resourcefulness, Ugh. you know? That's the theme of the week. Follow me. <laughs> survival priorities always stay the same. Shelter, water, fire, and food. These rocks are massive. That's insane. Our most important survival priorities have to happen today. We've got to get shelter and we have to get fire before nightfall. There are no other options. Just on the constant lookout for a good shelter spot. Water and food come later on the list of survival priorities. Today, we've got to check off fire and shelter. You know, I'm actually looking at this spot right here, man. You see how that log's falling across those two rocks? What makes this a good location for you? Right here, we've got almost three walls. I'm thinking sheltering right inside this trench. Take logs like this one right here, lay these across, put leaves on top of it. We'll build a big fire out front here that warms up these rocks. Just the shelter over your head at home you take for granted because out here this is the real deal. There's no sense in standing around talking. Let's get to work. We've got a lot of log hauling to do. Day one is baptism by fire. These guys have no idea how hard they're going to have to work to get this shelter up and ready before nightfall. And at some point today, we still have to get a fire going. Oh, dude, this is a good one right here. There you go. The more leaves you can get on top of that thing right
right now, the better. Man, this is exhausting. <laughs> I didn't think gathering leaves would be so much tough work. Just a couple years ago, I was in a wheelchair. I was almost 500 pounds, and my whole reason for being here is I've been getting complacent lately, and I needed something to kind of push myself. Halfway through day one, man, how's it feel going cold turkey on cigarettes? Well, I haven't really thought about it. I've been trying to make a shelter. <laughs> I have a history of cancer in my family, so this adventure in the wilderness, I think, will be a good jump start to helping me quit smoking. What do you guys think? Looking good. Yeah. Yeah, man. I'm digging this thing. From two little rocks, like, we have a really cool, like, like man den. Well, I think we're ready to move on to our second survival priority today, fire. We've got to have a fire going in order to stay warm tonight. I need you guys to grab as many dry leaves and dry branch tips as you can find. I'm going to go get some other materials to build one of the craziest fire starts you've ever seen in your life. I have no idea what Creek is talking about when he says it's going to be a crazy way to start fire. As the temperature drops, my patience will probably run thin. So hopefully we can get it going sooner than later. I really want to show you guys how to start a fire using a primitive fire method that Native American Indians would have used in this area. And a lot of times that was fire by friction, literally rubbing two sticks together. It's basically where you spin a spindle into a hearth board using a bow in order to create enough friction that creates a small burning ember. But we're going to create a mega size kit, a four man sized bow drill. This is something I have never attempted and never seen before. I have no idea how it's going to work. A standard bow drill kit's small, but we are going to use a mega spindle. Like, this is the size of our spindle. <laughs> We're taking these giant sticks, tying a rope around them, making a bow. Let me tell you, this guy's out of his mind. I have never started my own fire. Unless you mean with a cigarette lighter. Rock, this is going to be our bearing block, the piece that sits on top of the spindle. Mm -hmm. But we need a divot for that spindle to rest into. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to have you try to carve a hole in this right here. Jeff, I'm going to have you carve our spindle. Then Dan, I'm going to have you prep our hearth board. Split off two sides of this piece of wood. Okay. So that we've got kind of a flat board in the middle that's about an inch thick. Each of these components are absolutely critical. If one of them fails, the whole kit fails. Everybody's so focused on what they're doing. Like, you could have heard a pin drop out here. I've finished our bow, which is basically just a naturally curved, really solid stick. And I've just stretched a piece of paracord in the middle here. It's no joke right there. That's no joke. Yeah, I heard it. I kind of had a, a basic idea what a bow drill was, but nothing like that. I've, I'm talking about I've never seen nothing like that on TV, film, whatever it is. Never. Rock and Jeff... You guys are going to have to really pay attention to one another because you've got to keep this bow completely parallel. Let's get it spinning. Good, good, good. Go a little bit faster, guys. Okay, hold on. I've done bow drill thousands of times, but looking at this kit in this proportion, I don't know how this is going to turn out. This time, you're in it for the long haul. This right here is the moment of truth. This is for real. So I'm starting to go down. It's getting cold out, and this is it. It's either do or die right now. This has to work, because I don't care how many layers you got on. Cold is cold. Work with me on this, guys. It's nice and slow at first. Good. Oh, man. Keep it straight. Keep it level. Keep it level. Twice as fast, guys. Oh, man. Keep it straight. You Keep gotta it go faster. You get it wrong. I got Keep it. it. That's freaking it. All of a sudden, the spindle snapped on us. I'm freaking out. These guys are gonna kill me. Even though the sun's out now, when it goes behind those mountains, the temperature is going to plummet, and we have to have fire tonight. You gotta go faster. You got it wrong. I got Keep it. Like the freaking. We're working this bow like crazy, and the spindle snaps in half. Hold up. Get down here. 
We got one. I dive on the ground so I can get a closer look at the notch, and sure enough, we've got a little tiny ember in there. Real gentle, take your knife and push that ember out of that notch. Dan, this is dry, punky wood that I gathered off of a stump. Okay. I want you to powder this stuff up right on top of this. You help him out, Rock. All right. Now I'm at a point where I'm thinking we're okay, we're in the clear, and Creek's like, no. It's like, get the punky wood. You're taking our tiny ember, and we're growing. Right now, the only thing that matters in our life is that right there. I can't believe that ember was in there and that spindle busted, man, and Bust. that thing just stayed in there. And I tell you what, Jeff, this right here yeah. is on your shoulders. I want you to pick that up super freaking gently and then dump that ember down in that hole. Perfect. Now start to blow in there a little bit. It's nice and gentle. So I'm holding this bundle and blowing on it, and I, I don't want to mess it up. I want fire so bad. Now give it a nice steady blow right in there. Nice, Jeff. There you go, Jeff. A little bit more. Good. Now we're going to start to rotate it because fire likes to climb. Go ahead and start to slowly set it down. Yeah, good job, Rock. It needs oxygen right now. Oh my gosh, I thought we were going to lose it there for a second. We didn't know. That's the sign. We did, man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Good job, buddy. I can't tell you how awesome it is to watch these guys pull together and make this crazy vision I had for this mega bow drill set work. We've got about an hour left in daylight. Let's get some firewood. Good job, guys. All right. All right. Tomorrow, we'll strike out for water and we'll start thinking about food. Great. Yeah. I'm, I'm, did you hear that? That was my stomach. <laughs> really? <laughs> You guys ready to get out of here? Let's go. All right. Guess I'm leading the way. The night was rough because my mind's just wandering. You know, I'm like, what the f am I doing out here? <laughs> well, gentlemen, made it through the first night. Yeah. With all the work we did yesterday, we need to hydrate. We're just going to follow the sound of that rushing water. Let's get it. When you're out here trying to survive in these kind of conditions, it puts a whole perspective on things. Oh, man, I can hear that water. Man. The closer we get, the thirstier I'm getting. I know, you and me both. This is a good water hole right here. Well, I'll tell you what, man, I'm not waiting. Grab your straws and come on in here. This is your drinking part, okay? We put the fat in into the water. the water and suck. The straw-style survival filter is really simple. There's a filter attached to the bottom of the straw, so as you drink, all the biological contaminants are filtered out. Oh, man. That's what I'm freaking talking about oh, right there. Right from the source, man. It doesn't get any better than that. Now, that's real spring water. It was so good. That was the best taste of water I've ever tasted in my life. I needed that. Another day without water, and we would have been, we'd have been hurting. Something so small like drinking water felt so big out here after not having it for so long. What's next on the agenda, Creekster? We're going to start looking for wild edible plants, start looking for animal signs. And I say we head straight up that ridge. This time of year, in the dead of the winter, animals take shelter. So as we walk through this woods, we are going to look in and around every single hole that we find. I think he sees some. Why don't you hop around the other side, Rock? When you're standing out here in the woods, any opportunity to find food is a good opportunity. So I want to try to eat a squirrel burger up. Possum sandwich or something tonight. I'm gonna run this up in there. If something runs out, get ready. All right. Ah! Are you serious? <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude. You gotta stay on your toes. Oh. Well, there's nothing in there. Keep it moving. That was so wrong. <laughs> Here in the woods, we have to work for every single morsel. Look at these big grapevines, man. Look up there. Those right there are grapes. These are potentially edible for us. It's not a huge calorie score, but if nothing else, it'd be a great bait. How do we get up there to get that's, those grapes? That's what I'm thinking. That is the question. I'll get up there. 
Oh, Jeff and Jeff. Oh, Jeff just stepped up. All right, man, I'll nice. follow. Just remember, man, it's always risk versus reward. If it's just for the grapes, they're not worth climbing up to the top of this boulder. But these grapes could be the step to setting traps and potentially getting more food. Just be careful with that moss. That stuff's slippery. Yeah, it is. I got you if you slip. <laughs> I got you. Get under no, I got you. Yeah. I got, got, got you from 10 feet away. No, I got him. We're Grips. literally about 10 feet off the ground now, so do not fall. There you go. Good job, Success. Jeff. Success. You coming up, Creek? Well, if you if you can do it, I can do it. Me and Dan will just stay down here. You guys can handle it. He, he got it. It's all good. Try one. Wow. Dude, is it good? <laughs> don't, don't rub it in. Yeah, that was fantastic because I was so hungry. It didn't even phase me the dangers of getting to the top of that rock. Now, how are y'all finna get down? Yeah, that's what I'm sitting here thinking. I think you guys should swing around up on top. We'll jump over. Maybe you guys can help us on the other side. All right. All right. We'll see y'all later. Here. Let's get it, Dan. So now we need to jump across the rock that we're on back onto the other rock. And now I'm concerned about, wait a minute, I could really get hurt doing this. You know, things look a lot different from up here. <laughs> we are a long way away from a hospital, and all it takes is one simple slip of the foot, and you have a serious injury. All right, you ready? Yes, sir. <laughs> there you go. Next. They put their neck on the line to get up there and get those grapes. We had to make sure that we got them back safe. I'm reaching out. If he don't got you, I got you. It didn't even phase me the dangers of getting to the top of that rock. Good job, Success. Jeff. Now I'm concerned about, wait a minute, I could really get hurt doing this. Nice job, dude. Throughout my years of teaching survival skills, I often see a parallel between the challenges my students face in the woods and their struggles back at home. Jeff had to make a leap across that gap. And at the same time, he's thinking about making a big leap in his personal life. I'm a struggling musician. Right now, I'm at a crossroads in my life. Do I try to follow my dreams before it's too late? Or do I go right back to the regular day-to-day, -day, nine to five, that most people are accustomed to. Okay, guys, what do you say we feast on grapes? This is like oh. candy right now. I love this one. Yeah. <laughs> I never thought I'd be so happy to see a raisin. They're surprisingly good. Sweet. Oh, my goodness. When I'm walking through the grocery store, like, I, I walk by raisins all the time. I won't think anything of them. But to have that one little raisin today, it was like... Holy crap, I'm like, I just couldn't have been more thankful. Once you get out here, it's amazing what, what small things become so big to you. I haven't thought of smoking a cigarette once. You got so many other things on your plate. You got to worry about shelter. You got to worry about food. It's amazing. It is, man. Out here, you have to keep moving with a purpose. And now it's about using these grapes to get more food. We're going to use these grapes to set a series of deadfalls and hopefully catch some small game. What we're looking for to make these deadfalls is kind of a why. And this is really our whole trigger system. We just got to make a few cuts. It's typically a trigger system that holds a rock or a heavy log up. That trigger system is baited with a small piece of bait. And when that trigger is switched, the weight comes down, crushing and killing the animal. We're going to take one of our raisins. I'm gonna stick it on there. Now here's where it all comes together. You lift that up for me. And now lower it down. Nice and easy. Guys, watch your hands with that. Be careful. Nice. Just one little nibble, you know? Yep. And that thing's down. It's always a gamble with primitive trapping. You put in the effort and hope for the best, but there is certainly no guarantee. I'm a carnivore. I need meat. I want to kill something. <laughs> so I'm really looking forward to this. Twist the bait stick around so the bait's facing the face inside. Yeah. Yes, I think we got one. Bingo, brother. Even though we only have a few deadfalls set up, I actually have pretty high hopes for these things. Let go. Dude, are we good or what? If one of these traps work, we're eating in style. 
We're going to let them work for us tonight, and then we're going to go back in the morning and see if there's anything there. Here in the Great Smoky Mountains, survival doesn't come easy. Man, as nice as it is in this shelter, I think it's time to roll out. We've been burning a ton of calories over the past few days and have only eaten a few dried grapes. I'm hoping that today, our luck is going to change. Oh, yeah. It's way colder out here. It did get into the teens last night. So it was uncomfortable, but it was livable. So today, I think our main priority should be to check our deadfalls. Hopefully, there's something in there and we come back with food. Today, it's all about making our life back at camp more comfortable. And that involves more foraging and more hunting for wild edibles. Man, Jeff's sprinting. He's excited to check those deadfalls. Yes, I am. That's My stomach's excited. I'm going on day three here. Yeah, I've had five little raisins. I'm starving out here. I know, and I know the other guys are, too. Well, Rock, ours is still set, man. Man. Nothing. I'm trying to stay positive. I, I just don't know how much more I can do. Two more to go. Well, I can see this one's still up. Yeah. And the bait's still on it. That's just how it is, man. But it's still set, it's man. It's still set. One more to go. Is that urine dance? Yep. It's down. Are you serious? I'm serious. Well, Rock, ours is still set, man. Man. One more to go. It's down. Are you serious? No, no, serious. As we approached the trap, we saw that it was actually closed down. You want to talk about, like, just sheer excitement and enjoyment. We're thinking, there's got to be something under there. Let's see if anything was chewing on it or not. There's, there's hair under there. Nah. -uh. <laughs> Look, something, something was in there. Something triggered that. Looks like it could be like a rat. That's, That's a good there. sign, man. Yeah, it is. Let's reset it. We're good? Yeah. We've got three empty deadfalls, no food, and that's just how it goes. You just never know whether or not you're going to get something. I'm freaking starving. Yeah, we're all starving, yeah. but what are we going to do? I hear you. I'm hungry, too. Even though I'm really hungry and frustrated, I'm trying to hide my frustration with the food situation. I'll tell you what, guys, why don't we switch gears from thinking about food to hydrating. Before we go back down to the stream, I have an idea on how we can make some containers that can hopefully help us carry water back up that hill. Let's head back to camp, let's make some containers, and then let's go get water. Great. Right. Say a blessing. Bye. We're going to use the coals from a fire to burn out a log and make a container. Primitive cultures have used fire to make tools for thousands of years. First thing we need to do is saw this guy up into a few manageable chunks. Tulip poplar is perfect for coal burn containers because it's a soft wood and it makes that burning process go all that much faster. Good job, fellas. All right, so we got four nice chunks. We're going to take our knife and we got a punch out a little divot right in the middle. I'm going to get out nice hot coal from the fire. I'll put it right in your little divot, and you've got to drive the heat from that coal into that wood. And we're literally going to blow this bowl into shape. I'm trying not to inhale the smoke. I'm just focused on my water bowl right now and not nicotine and tar and, oh my goodness, never mind, I'm good. I'm just focusing on my water bowl right now. Dan, you're getting pretty close, man. That's easily four or five cups. That's because I don't want to make that hike. Exactly. <laughs> Dan has commented a few times this week on how he's been struggling on this terrain in the woods and how carrying a lot more weight than the other guys is really slowing him down. You guys want to head down there? Yeah. Ready? Get this over with? Now or never, I guess. Dan's probably going to realize that he needs to go back home and make some better health decisions. It's a pretty deep pool right there. Let's go right there, then. Guys, I don't know about you, but mine holds a lot of water. No, that's a lot. Fill up, fellas. It's hard to walk up without two hands full of a coal burn container and water. It's important we get back to camp with this water. Otherwise, all of this effort 
is for nothing. I am huffing and puffing over here. You guys are not making this easy. Oh, can we take a breather? Yo, my back is killing me right now. This is brutal. Oh, this is where that 300 plus pounds comes into play, man. The good news is, is this is going to buy us at least a half day's worth of water. Baby steps. I'll get there. One thing I could say that I'm definitely getting out of this is I know I can push myself further than I ever expected. I think the hard part is done, fellas. We've only had a few wild dried raisins in three days, and that's starting to wear on everybody. But I'm hoping that now that we have these primitive containers to bring more water back to camp, we can start spending some more time and energy on finding food. Tomorrow is basically a repeat of today. We go out, we forage, we look for wild edibles, and we get more water. We just keep staying alive. I hear you. I'm just not looking forward to that trek. Man, guys, it's snowing. This is one thing I was hoping we would avoid. When the temperatures are like this, man, our bodies are burning energy like crazy. We'll start this morning by checking our deadfalls again. Yeah. And hopefully that changes things. If not, then I say we just do what we've been doing the past couple of days, looking in holes, turning over logs. Day four has started out pretty demoralizing. The snow's coming down, and none of us are really in that great of a mood as we go on yet another trek to check the deadfalls. And I'm really hoping that we get lucky today, because tomorrow I'm sending each of these guys off to survive completely alone, and they'll need all the calories they can get. I never had to experience hunger pains like this before. I mean, all of us have been hungry before, but this right here is on a different level. I can actually feel my stomach contracting and cramping. Nothing. Not a dang thing. One down. Oh. It's down. Might be, might be something under it. It's down. Nothing. Oh. The fur probably fell from the weather. As we approach the last trap, it's still set and literally looks untouched. Strike three. Are we out? We're out. I'm cold and I'm hungry. I was beyond frustrated. I was very angry. Out here, I'm in hell. Jeff's giving me this freaked out look, but in this situation, complaining and being frustrated is going to do absolutely zero for getting you ahead. I'd prefer to eat squirrel all day long, but there are other edible things in this woods that are as glamorous. And so our only option now is to actively hunt. At this point, I will eat pretty much anything that's thrown in front of me. I don't care if it's got four legs, ten legs, twelve legs, whatever. It's brutal in the dead of winter here in the Great Smoky Mountains for humans and animals. We've been looking in holes for like the last four or five days, and we haven't found So at this point, I don't think we're going to find nothing. Hey, guys, look at this. Look at this, Jeff. Oh, that's a, is that a bee? It's a bee. Look at this. There's a bunch of bees. This is a whole nest in here. This changes things. What kind of nutritional value does a bee have? All insects are packed with vitamins and minerals and protein especially. I don't know why I don't share your enthusiasm over this. <laughs> Before I came out here, I told myself I'm not going to eat any kind of bugs. Where there's honey bees, there's honeycomb. And there's and, honey. And there may be honey. Why don't we look more in this tree, dude? I mean, right. we might actually find a little. Uh-oh. All kinds of honey. No freaking joke. Damn. Nice. <laughs> Score! That's what I'm talking about. Not only are these bees edible, but the honey inside is so rich in sugar and energy and all the stuff we need. If we were native people in this area and had found a score like this, it is truly a gift of one of Mother Nature's finest and healthiest treats. What's happened is this tree has fallen. These bees have fled this cold temperature and or died. So who wants this first freaking morsel, man? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I've never had, like, natural honey like this. Oh, my God, it's so sweet. There looks like more down in here. Oh, my oh, God. dude. <laughs> I think we done found a mother load. I say we load up and get back to camp. Who wants to carry this? Do y'all trust me to carry that? <laughs> I would not let you down, guys. Nice job, Rock.
Yes, sir. I told you I wasn't going to waste this. Cooking the bees is going to be really simple. We're going to put them in the coal burn container, and we're going to place rocks that we've heated in the fire inside with the bees, and it's going to parch them, literally cooking them in a matter of a few minutes. Ooh, you I hear them frying. That is good. Cooking. Just frying bees with rocks, guys. I mean, oh. typical day in the woods. <laughs> typical yeah. day in the woods. Dig in, fellas. Cheers. Never thought I'd ever eat Ooh. a honeybee. It's crunchy. I'm going to dip mine in this honey right there. Mmm. That's not bad. Jeff, the moment of truth. Chew it. Taste it. Taste it. There you go. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> it's not that bad. <laughs> Good job. Nice. There you go, Jeff. Nice. Hey, come on. Eat right. it up. After almost a week with no food, these bees and honey are exactly what these guys needed. On top of the fact that we had the honey like a little dipping sauce, and you dip your little whoopy wham into the sauce, oh my goodness. Bee surprise is what I call it. It was delicious. It really was. Well, guys, tomorrow's your solo day. Yay. What are your biggest concerns? Staying alive. I'm worried about staying warm, because if I can't get a fire going, dude, I'm screwed. These three strangers have been working together as a team, but tomorrow on Solo Day, all of that changes. Well, guys, we got a few more bees left. Anybody want a bee? Yeah. Bees all around. Bottoms up. Well, guys, Solo Morning's here time for you guys to strike out and do your thing. So, Rock, you're going to head right over the hill right here. Dan, you're going to head in that direction. And then, Jeff, I'm going to send you on the far side of the ridge. If you find a good rock outcropping, you shouldn't have to do too much work to build it out. Okay. When Mother Nature gives you a shelter, you absolutely take it. You're actually going to carry fire with you. We're going to fill each of your bowls with punky wood. Then we're gonna take an ember from the fire and bury it inside of that punky wood. So guys, gather up your materials, pack up, and head out. Sound like a plan. This is gonna be interesting. <laughs> Good luck, guys. Jeff, no! <laughs> Don't go! I'm gonna miss you, man. You got this, man. We'll see. I will see you in the morning, my brother. Yes, sir. Good luck, brother. There'd be something down here. Wow, this is nice. Wow, that goes in pretty deep. This definitely looks like something somebody lived in. All right, I gotta find some wood. Oh, wait a minute. This might work. I think I'll lay right here. The fire will be right out there. This is perfect. That's a nice little indention right there. Oh, yeah. I think this is going to be my shelter for the night. It looks pretty good. I hope it ain't a cougar or something up in there to bite me in my ass, though. Out here, I'm doing everything we did as a team by myself. It's not easy. Now we make some good fire. It's like one of those chest-beating caveman moments. I can definitely tell you, this is where being a smoker comes into effect, because I'm pretty sure if I didn't smoke, that I would have a little more lung capacity to get through all this. I am dying of thirst. I'm going to go down to the stream and get some water. Well, this sucks. What happened to all the water? This is unbelievable. There was water here yesterday. The thing was filled all week. I think I'm ready to start the fire now. Well, at least try. Just lay it in. Oh, it went straight down to the bottom. You burn the hell out your hand, and that ain't no joke. I'll gather this ice up and bring it back to camp, put it by the fire, and I'll have a little bit of water. Being out here without uh, a phone, in the computer is is nice just to unplug and get away even in my music career i'm constantly doing self-promotion on on the internet and it's nice to be free of all that the 
best way to purify water in the wild is boiling. So I'm going to show you how to boil water, as long as you have a fire, in a container that's not metal. And a great way to do that is to heat rocks in the coals of the fire and then place those rocks into the water, bring it to a boil, and then you're good to go. As long as you see those bubbles rolling to the top, you've got a visual confirmation that this water is boiling and killing all viruses, all protozoan cysts, and all bacteria in open source water. I gotta get this fire going. Creek, don't fail me now, brother. That's what I wanted to see. Oh, that is a beautiful sight right there. Yes. Now to just keep it going and build it up. That smoke is a good sign. You see that? How we do it. Honestly, I didn't think I was going to be able to do this by myself. I really didn't. Anybody that got a nine to five that go to work constantly day in and day out. Let me tell you, this is real work right here. There he is. Oh, look who decided to show up. Dan, the man that came to the woods to test himself. This is a great looking shelter. Welcome to Casa de Dan. <laughs> there is no doubt in my mind that Native Americans have once used that exact location to take refuge in this area. I just think it's so cool that you've got all this soot up here from hundreds, maybe even thousands of years ago from people who sheltered in this exact spot. It looks like you have set yourself up really well for the night. So I wish you the best of luck tonight. I will catch you in the morning. All right, man. Creekster. It's rock under a rock. <laughs> it's a nice little spot you got going on, man. Can't complain. Check it out. It's We got way back in there. Yeah. Got plenty of firewood. Yep. And you got a fire going. You tapped into your primitive spirit. I ain't never done nothing like this before. I'm going to leave you, brother. No doubt. There's nothing I can do here. You got it all set up. Good job, man. Be careful, just speak. Oh man, I can't wait to see this shelter. Dude, you like no it? No joke, man. Nice fire pit, man. I mean, seriously, really nice fire pit. It's gonna reflect heat. Yeah. Obviously, this is your bed, right? Yes. In there. It's perfect, man. Don't forget in the morning, head back to base camp so we can wrap this week up. You got it. Last night, out in the woods, I really had a lot of time to think about my life, my home, my family. And I thought, they are what matters, not you. I need to start not worrying so much about me when I could be taking all that energy and giving it to them. It's hard out you, you know what I mean? But... Well worth it. I suggest you do it at least one time in your life, man. It'll give you a new perspective, I swear. I've learned that I can survive out here in this nonsense. You know, I can survive. Man, last night, I thought I was going to wig out a little bit. But once I just sat down, sat by the fire, man, it was all right, it really was. If I could spend the night in the woods by myself in pitch black darkness, I'm pretty sure I can do anything that I want to. I guess it's time to head back to base camp and see what the other three doing. It wasn't bad sleeping out here last night. Fire kept me stoked, man. The fire was hot. I just hung out here. All right, I'm out. Shower is calling my name. I think I'm gonna miss this place. Last night was very peaceful. I had a lot of time to just think about things. I can't wait to see my family. I'm ready to go. <sighs> Look who crawled out from under a rock. Good morning, brother. You made it. I made it. Good to see you this morning, man. Made it. Dan the man. How'd you fare? I probably got the best sleep last night than I have all week. <laughs> Look who it is. 
Good morning. You look pretty happy. You must have gotten a squirrel last night. No, I didn't, but I did see one this morning. Unbelievable. Yeah. I remember thinking on day one when you guys got out of that truck, if these guys are as tough as they look, then we're going to be okay. And here we are, day six, and you're still sanding. You know, Rock, you came into this thing, man, to face two challenges. To take on Mother Nature while also going cold turkey on one of the most difficult habits to break on planet Earth, smoking. If this experience can help me stop smoking, I think it'll be all worth it. And I just kept thinking, this guy is going to be a bear to deal with. But you were the exact opposite and had a positive attitude the whole week long. When I know on the inside you had to be struggling a little bit and you showed us that if you put your mind to something, you can get through it. You're a real inspiration this week, man. Congratulations. Appreciate it, man. Appreciate it. Dan, I tell you what, man. When I first laid eyes on you, I was like, there's a crazy-looking character right there. <laughs> but there is way more to you than that hard knots persona. If you go back home and you apply what you've learned about focus and patience to your crazy, hectic life, I don't think there's a limit to what you can accomplish. Congratulations this week on a job well done, brother. Thank you very much, sir. Could have done without these guys without your help. And then there's Jeff. Jeffy Jeff. You've done some pretty Rambo things this week, man. You were the one who blew our little bow drill ember into flame. I'll get up there. You got up on the literal edge of that rock and grabbed wild raisins for the group of us. Yeah. Yeah. Strangers <laughs> that you do not know. You came into this week struggling a little bit between having to provide for your family, but also wanting to pursue your dream in music. With your work ethic and attitude, I really believe that you can have them both. And so I actually want to give you a personal gift. I want to give you the same exact survival wow. knife that I use. Every time you strap this to your belt, just remember a week when you took it to the edge and didn't give up. Thanks, brother. It really hit me emotionally, some of the things he said. It made me feel good that, man, I must have done something out here to deserve this, and I'm really proud of that. He deserved that knife. He deserves to take that knife back to his kids and show them, look what Daddy did. You guys did an awesome job this week, and it has been an absolute honor to spend this time in the woods with you. Creek, if you made me cry, I'm going to keep <laughs> No, no, do it. Right. Ready to say goodbye to our little cave? It's time. It's time to go home. <laughs> Let's get out of here. Let's go. The smallest things are so big to me right now because living out here, it shows you how rough it really can be. If you're given an opportunity, take it because you have no idea what you could be missing if you say no. And that's why I'm here. I had a lot of time to just think about my family. No matter what direction I go in, they're my number one priority. And that's all that really matters in life. The practice of primitive survival skills teaches a lot of life lessons. This right here is why I spend my life in the woods.